How's it going, folks? Welcome back to the channel after a year. <laughs> I had a kid shortly after my last post and have not had a chance to get back in and actually film anything because um, I've been making stuff, selling stuff. Hope you guys are doing the same. Um, working on some knife sheets today for uh, SE Azula 2 knife. I uh, got a nice little bullet ant Azula engraving on the laser. Uh, made out of eight, nine ounce Herman Oak leather. So rocking 24 ounce welt there. Pretty hefty. Um, this is a completed one, of course. And I have one ready to go. Uh, you'll notice I have a line set for my stitch. I don't use a uh, edge guide or whatever. I never have. Um, I just use the creasing tool to, to put a line here. As opposed to the actual grooving tool, I used to use the grooving tool a lot, which is good if you want your stitches to look straight and low. If you want them to look a little more chiseled and, and kind of pop up, give it a little bit of a thicker appearance, uh, I really highly recommend using that creasing tool because it, it just doesn't relief quite as far. So it, it, it really gives your stitch kind of that more three-dimensional look. So um, let's go ahead here and fire away. See if I can get this guy to stitch up without giving me any trouble. Make sure I'm in the right place here. Okay. Pull my slack. Make sure you don't want any slack on that back side, especially. That's my back stitch. I only do one back stitch on these because the entire ending of the stitch is actually hidden underneath the belt loop. So it's not as necessary to do multiple back stitches on this project. Um, because also the hardware is kind of keeping everything together. So if you've got a thread that popped at that point, I mean, it's structurally not a problem it's just going to look funny keeping pressure down on my work to make sure that when that needle comes up, it doesn't pull the work up with it. Um, it can be a problem, especially with the thicker, harder leathers. You get a bunch of glue in there and it's just a lot of friction. So you want to make sure and keep your pressure downward on your piece as you're going. Here's my back stitch. Give it a little tug and see how she turned out. Pretty good. And get to focus a little bit. There we go. And there's the back side. Ran nice and clean through 24 ounces. Not pre punched. Not necessary. It can be helpful. It will help your machine probably run smoother if you do pre punch, but. Um, I figured out how to get away without doing it. So if you can, great, um, but no shame in pre-punching. I know a lot of people that do that and they make really, really good stuff. It just takes a little more time. So um, just a reminder on my setup. Here, I'll flip this around maybe. Oh, it's not gonna let me flip it, okay. Um, nothing's really changed on my machine. I'm still running Grosbecker 140-22 needles. Um, the one, one 34D series. Uh, I've heard of some people using different ones, but I'm using the 134 series needle. Um, I've got a handmade thread tower here that uh, was just made out of some steel tubing, a little eye hook. I <laughs> added this just for, for help. I mean, coming the thread coming straight up off the spool really makes a difference. Um, 
and it obviously did not need to be anything fancy. I just needed to move it off so that it was coming off more smoothly. Um, over here, really nothing, nothing major has changed. Um, I still use this stock bobbin winder. The one difference is I changed the uh, bolt out with an 832 stainless steel bolt, um, partly so it would rust, partly because most of my bobbins all fit <clears throat> right over the 832, slide right on. And so I just got a wing nut. I put the wing nut on the end that holds it in place, put a drop of oil on there, and I can wind a bobbin in about 15 seconds. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. I put some medical tape on here just to give it a little friction. That's something I have to replace periodically, um, but not really a big deal. Other than that, pretty much running a stock machine. Filed the foot. I've removed all, all of the bobbin springs. I don't use those anymore. If I was using 69 thread, I might, but with 138 or bigger, take those springs off. You don't need them, or at least bypass them. But I find if people bypass them, sometimes they get issues with their thread hanging up in there. So I just get rid of it because there's no need for the extra friction. So anyway, thanks for watching.